the things I promise myself I do is try to look at every campsite. So right at the top of the hill is campsite one. Let's go take a look. Coming into the campsite, we've got tent pad one, picnic table fire ring, tent pad two, right next to the fire ring. Maybe a hammock spot over there. And really that's about it. So there's campsite one. As you exit campsite one, you head up a hill. And here's campsite zero. Campsite Zero has no tent pads. Just a nice happy place for you to set up. Fire ring, picnic table. Very quick exit back to the trail. Number two, right across from zero. You can see one over there. This one has a large pad, rather than two small ones. And the fire ring and picnic table there. As far as hammocking goes, it doesn't look very promising. Maybe one over yonder. That's about it. Coming up on number three, just up the hill from two and one and zero. bit of a downhill you can see another campsite over yonder right in there and here's your campsite set up you got a pad over here another pad right there so two pads plus lots of trees they're a bit bigger, but it looks like there's plenty of, plenty of spots for hammocks here. This might be one of the reasons they call it wooded, is for the hammock users. They have a wooded map. Moving on. Hiding on the left, just past a big gnarly tree, is number four. Number four is in the grass. Looks like it's overlooking the, the valley. I guess they're all overlooking valleys in a way so far. No designated tent pads. Not really any hammockable spots. Maybe this one. Just maybe. There you go. Not far off the path. Also, you can kind of see zero off in the distance there. Sites five and six. A sign like that is a good sign. Oh, that they are off the beaten path a little bit. All right, take a look at five. This 
one is definitely a ways out. Very close to number three, just on the other side of a ravine, but definitely takes a little bit more effort to get to. I can see it down there. Lots of trees. What looks to be poplar, not birch, but poplar. So based on what I'm seeing here, we got a pad, kind of an open space over here, you got the fire ring, you got the table, and you're right on the edge of a decent drop off. There's some trees, um, mostly up the hill if you're going to be hammocking. This is one I probably wouldn't go to if I was hammocking. Again, that's number five. I'm going to climb back up the hill. Take a look at number six. This one's definitely larger than five. Five was cozy. Six, I'd like to mosey on over. There's six. Your two tent pads are adjacent. Somebody was nice enough to leave a burnt log in one of the tent spots. So, hammocking, check. You probably get two in there, three if you're lucky. With the primitive outhouse being nearby, these are some pretty decently convenient campsites. Let's look at 7 through 9 with the wind in your ears. It sprawls out like a chicken's foot. These all seem to be prairie sites. 7, 8, and 9 entrances. The view up here is pretty awesome. Campsite 7, pretty open, there's a hammock spot if you don't mind being on a cliff. A little muddy right now, that's probably on purpose because it's near the fire ring. But you definitely have some space to work with. And then there's that, it's about a 12 foot gap there. Maybe 11, probably closer to 12. You could always go from there over to the second tree there too. So, one hammock, plenty of tent space at seven. Leaving seven, heading to eight and nine. Hopefully this drops the sound noise a little bit. What I need is a noise moth to avoid this wind noise. Eight. It's in a beautiful prairie with an earshot of seven and nine. Lots of space. Two gigantic trees. But other than that, it doesn't look like there's any real hammock spots. Maybe, maybe those two. They're about 11, 12 feet apart. Other than that, it's mostly a tent site. Looks like you can fit a couple big ones there. Again, the view. There's the porta potty and there's number nine.
in the spring. This is all grass and flowers. Summer, just as good. There's a deer. And there goes another one. I was wondering what was standing over here. I bet they're just hanging at the cliffs too. It's a pretty significant drop off where they ran in. I was at campsite 12 a couple times and uh, the deer seem to love it on this side much more than the other side all right 12 sorry nine campsite nine power of suggestion so somebody had a fire somebody had a fire the fire pits over there you got a nice tent pad right next to the fire ring. You do the math. If you like it cozy, there you go. And it looks like most of your tent space here in number nine is over here. But unfortunately there was some big fire fires that people had that don't quite allow you to camp where you think you should camp. It almost looks like the ring used to be right here. And that's almost the same size, too. I don't know. Who knows what happened over here at 9. Such a beautiful day. About 41, 42 degrees. I got a full belly of skirka rice and beans. I mean... The only thing that would really make it better is if I had my kids with me. It'd take longer. I wouldn't be doing this either, though. But that's all right, because they're uh, two in nine months, so I'd be hauling one on my back, and the other one would ask me to pick them up every once in a while, and I'm perfectly okay with that. It's, um, it's weird being a dad now, because suddenly, you know, it's kind of all you, all you really do is you do everything for your kids. It's like, I don't even care. I mean, I, you know, you, you do your job, you know, you do everything you need to do, but in the end, you just kind of do everything for your kids because you love them and you want them to grow up and do it right to the best of your ability. And oh, You know, it's fun. It's a lot of fun. There's, there's ups, there's downs. You forget the downs. And you try to have as many ups as you can. It's a fun part of being a dad, I guess. Anyway. Enough cheesy stuff. Let's head to campsite 10 and 11. There's the porta potty, not porta. That is a primitive toilet. A very nice looking primitive toilet. Some advantages to campsite 10 and 11. Include that when the water works, you are the closest to it. There's a water station and the wood are both right there. Right next to campsite 10 and 11. Let's go take a peek. So you got bathroom. You got the water, you got the wood. Campsite 10 is not far off the beaten path. Now I'm on high alert for deer. So camp campsite 10 is slanted. Uh, very tilted ground here. This is the first non-flat site I think I've seen. The space is decent enough for a couple. I wouldn't recommend hanging any hammocks in here. Definitely not. Not even up here. But uh, that's probably flat enough. 
probably flat enough for most tents, most people. Coming out of 10, hanging to right is 11. With an earshot of 10, we've got 11. Eleven is situated underneath a cool looking tree. There's shade here, but it's still really open. And you've got a spot behind the tree to the side. It's a little muddy, but you can go there. You could also go right in here if you really wanted to, but it's a little tilted. And then there's another spot back there. I wouldn't call this a hammock site per se, unless I guess you could use some of these trees. Maybe one back there and one of those. I'd call this a one, maybe two hammock site, plus maybe three or four tents. This is a, a big site, number 11. Looking good, number 11. Walking out of number 11 is a heavy buck. Alright, we're walking in on 12 and 13. 12 you've seen in a couple of my videos now. But let's go check it out anyway. So it's part of this video. Number 12. There are a lot of deer tracks and a lot of deer poop walking into this camp. So, there's a deer right there, as a matter of fact. Hey, guy. All right, cruising in on number 12. Now that I've spotted the deer. So campsite 12 is not particularly hammock friendly. Most of the stuff here is either too small for a hammock or too close. You got plenty of tent space that way. You've got the fire ring. You got the picnic table. And then you've got tons of flat tent space here. You could have a small community in this one. Uh, I've always posted up from this tree over to that tree, which is about 16, 15, 16 feet. So it's a little long, but um, I mean, from that one to that one is only about 10. So my tarp wouldn't even fit in there. So as far as hammocks go, I mean, you could make it work. There's a couple spots. But this is a tent site for sure. Uh, that is slanted downward. And then all of this is just flat, 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 with a very small tilt toward the picnic table. Probably pretty comfy. Campsite 13's trail may have a mole problem. And I haven't even seen the bloody mole. A couple guys out for a walk too. Wonder if they're camping. They sure weren't carrying a lot. Hope they're out for a walk and I can finish this video. But we'll see. Alright. Campsite. 13. 13's got a decent flat space for a couple of tents. Maybe a hammock spot 
from there to there, that looks to be about 12 feet. That's about it though. Oh, we got a whole lot of deer. They're all looking at me. There's about eight of them. Sorry for the disorientating. There's one. Two, three, four. I'm just slowly driving these guys northward here, unfortunately. Alright, there's your porta potty. Primitive toilet. It's not a porta potty. Stop calling it a porta potty. Number 24. We're looking at a nice flat campsite here. It's not large. Big enough for two tents. Looks like it slightly angles downhill toward me actually, toward this way. And as far as hammocks go, I would not bother. So this campsite is probably not useful as far as hammocks go but for tents it's okay it's a smaller smaller campsite for smaller groups not that the, any of these are really truly group campsites as far as I know so again that is 24 24 at the very end of it all is campsite 26 so if you're looking for a walk, this is the place to go. It's in a big open field, but it's surrounded by woods. This is kind of where the deer took refuge. I'm going to try to sneak up kind of quietly. I'm going to zoom in on the sign really quick up there. What do you say? Oh, it's a map. Cool. So 26 is on a corner, actually. We've there's a squirrel. We've got the road. And we've got a second road right here. And we've got another one over there. 26 is definitely slanted. You've got a nice flat spot up here near the ring. The ring, they'll probably fix that. It's pretty tilted. Um, as far as hammocking, it looks like we've got a decent spot from that tree to that tree. And that's about it. I wouldn't, maybe in the grove back in there, but try to stay on the campsite if you can. So, okay for tents. Maybe one, two, and then a place for a hammock. Uh, I took a little stop just to check out the old farmstead up the hill. And uh, if you want to see that, you're going to check it up yourself. Or check it out yourself. These guys are hungry today. I don't even know if he knows I'm here. Well, I'm not going to that side anymore. Hopefully I don't spook him too much. So, across from, uh, he sees me now, 26, is campsite 27. Makes sense. It's 
So 27 is at the end of the road on the right, if you're coming from the normal parking area and walking straight up the hill via the normal trail. Plenty of deer tracks going in and out of here. So, impressions. Nothing hammock or tent wise that way. Got a somewhat lumpy spot right here. You got a spot on a small slant there. It's probably four or five degrees, maybe three. I don't know. I don't angle very well. This is a nice flat spot here next to the fire ring. There's a spot over here, but it's very slanted. I don't think you'd want to put a tent there. You could potentially hammock. It's about Oh, from this tree over to this one, maybe 10 feet. If you got a small hammock, do it. There's a much larger distance here from that one to that one. You could even maybe pull off a few other ones in here. So I'd say it's a good spot for about two. About two hammocks maybe. And then uh, one comfortable tent, maybe another one on a slant. So that's 27. Alright, coming around to campsite 25, it is right off the beaten path. It's right next to an open meadow. Much more open than the camera maybe gives it credit for. Campsite 25 is pretty good. I mean, you got a spot right here in the entrance that's decent. There's a spot right here behind this tree to the left that looks pretty much as flat as it can get. You've got a nice 11, 12, 13 foot gap between trees there. You've got another one right here to here if you're a hammocker. You've got a little bit of a larger gap between those, maybe 15 feet, and lots of space for lots of tents. We even got another one right here. And another one right here. So this is an excellent campsite for hammockers. It's also an excellent campsite for tenters. Pretty much this is a fantastic campsite for anybody. And again you've got this nice open little prairie here. You are somewhat next to your neighbors over there at 27 but so be it. You're pretty much like that anywhere. You just got to respect your neighbors. So, while it is close to the trail, there really isn't anybody uh, walking down this far, so you're not going to get a lot of traffic. This is a fantastic campsite. Uh, when I came here in the winter a couple years ago, some guys stayed in this campsite, and now I know why. They knew what they were doing. This is the best one by far. So campsite 25, lucky 25, is an excellent campsite. Next campsite down the road is 23. 23 is off the path. On the other side of the field down the road is 25. Nice open area. A lot of deer tracks walking down this trail as well. I feel like that's a common theme in this park. If you want to see deer, this might be the place to come. So, this is a, like, what you'd expect type of campsite. There is no shade. Maybe a little bit from this tree over here. There are no hammock sites whatsoever. This is a field campsite for sure. And uh, it's decently flat. Slants slightly toward me, but um, you could get a couple tents in here. It's a little snug, but there it is. Campsite 23. Well, if you uh, get a campsite here at Afton, there's a high probability that you'll be at one of these nine sites. Let's go check out 14 through 22. 
they are somewhat near the excuse me somewhat near the primitive bathroom and the water. They're just kind of punched in here. Lots of deer tracks, lots of people tracks, even some dog tracks. And all I can say is it's probably all downhill from here. Oh, ho, ho. All right, 14 is first. is right off the path and right here. You can actually see 23 from here and uh, around the picnic table is pretty much a mud pit. If it rains, I don't envy you. Looks like somebody put some straw out to try to help the situation. There's a slanted opening right here as well, but this campsite is not too tent friendly. It's also not very hammock friendly. So out of all the campsites, I'd say 14 is one that I would try to avoid unless there was just nothing else around. All right, we are coming in on 15. Campsite 15. Fifteen is very open. You got a nice spot right here near the entry. It's very flat. You got a very slight slant toward the table here in the center right now. It's just to the left of the table. And then very, very slight, if any, slant in the back right there. I think this is a pretty darn flat site. With a fire ring and the picnic table over here. So, 15 is a good site. As far as hammocks, this is about a 13 foot gap. Looks like maybe somebody has camped there at some point. And then this is probably closer to 17. I don't know if I'd mess with that. But maybe a hammock, definitely some tents. We are sneaking in on campsite 16. A little off the beaten path. I'm fine with that. Okay, maybe this isn't because this is a beaten path. Ha uh ha. -huh. It's a little off the main trail. There's some nice privacy here at 16 in the form of a ring of trees and shrubberies. You'll hear the rattle of oak leaves in the late fall, early spring. You got space for a few tents here and no hammocks. This is definitely a tent only site, but again, this is really the first one we've seen with like a privacy wall of trees. Sixteen's good. We've come to a fork in the road. The first leading to seventeen through nineteen. The others, 20 through 22. Let's head on over to 17 through 19 first. And then we'll head to the last three. There's tracks leading out of here. This must have been used over the weekend. Lots of muddy footprints. You get to a branch and it goes 17, 18, 19. Seventeen first. A 
must concede, if any point we run into people in a site, I will turn around and just come back another day. Seventeen is nice and in the woods. It's a very wooded campsite. You can see some of the other ones off in the distance here on the other side of the ravine. It's a downhill climb to 17. 17 has a designated tent site. has a space beyond it that's slanted. spot down here that's really flat. And then the fire ring. And it looks like there's a wall or something. Ah oh, yes, here we go. A nice fall off from the edge of the campsite. So this is really kind of a back in the woods, one flat site for sure type of thing. Uh, hammock wise, maybe from like here to there. That looks like a deer trail between those two trees. I wouldn't mess with that. You end up with deer inside your tarp. And that's about it. So 17 is it's more of a tent site, but if you have a hammock and a tent, or maybe two small tents, you should be okay. Walking in on campsite 18 here. One pad. Beautiful view of the river. And then another pad. Not too much in the way of hammock. Maybe one over there between those two, two near the tent pad. But other than that, not a lot. Fire ring is right on the edge here. 19's interesting because the entry is over there, and I just decided to start at this end just to show you. We've got a tent pad up top and then a drop down and then another tent pad just past the picnic table and I came down right here as part of the entry there's that second tent pad and just like 18 you get that nice view of the river to go to sleep to This one, just like 18, is on the edge of a cliff. I would not recommend maybe bringing the small children here, but it's a nice looking site otherwise. Campsite 20, just panning across, has got a pad, fire pit, and another pad. Hammock campers, there is one spot right here. It's about 13, 13 and a half feet across, and that's about it. So one hammock, two tent sites. That's number 20. Campsite 21 is nestled back in the woods, just down from 20. You can't see it from 21, which is cool. You got the two tent pads, but then you got lots of trees. I'd say that uh, from that tree to that tree is a good 12 feet. Um, I don't know if there's too many other spots for hammocks besides there, but you got one. You know, maybe two if you want to go over the edge and maybe put it right up in here somewhere, but um, in general, looks like one solid hammock spot. You can also maybe trick this one to that one, depending on how much or how big your gear is. You could work something back in there as well, but that's kind of on a deer trail, so maybe you want to avoid it. At the end of the road is campsite 22. A little muddy over there, but flat. Not a lot in that direction. Maybe a hammock spot back there. 
no tent pads per se, and maybe another hammock spot right here. So, probably more hammock friendly than anything, but that's 22.